by doing with this jungle gym is that we're taking this large warehouse space and breaking down the big box and trying to address some of the issues of the big box. Um, some of the issues being low wages, which means the city doesn't get as much income revenue. Um, um, parking. Um, it has to take a, a large amount of parking to service these places. It's just a sea of parking that's not revenue generating. Um, it's a suburban model. The building itself takes up a large amount of land, a large amount of urban land in our case. Um, internally focused, it's not addressing any of the um, urban fabric, the rest of what's going on in the city, and it's also just aesthetically um, kind of unimpressive. So what we're doing with these jungle gyms is we're taking this whole warehouse and we're breaking down the pieces. Um, we're turning it into, for a smaller grocery, um, we're in the structured uh, parking. We're also looking at offices for jungle gym headquarters or other offices that can use the grocery and also use the other amenities of the site. Also attached on to um, the jungle gyms would be cafes at grade level and retail at grade level in order to help better um, integrate itself into the rest of the project and the rest of, kind of the city of the And so um, one of the main features, okay, so um, also another problem with the big box is that um, it has a large social impact, it also has a large environmental impact, and so that's kind of why um, we're attacking this issue. And one of the things that Jungle Gyms can bring is that it kind of sells this, it sells this like exotic, regional, or um, kind of foreign foods and things like that, but we can also use it to sell the idea of locally grown foods. So by cutting out the interior of this building and turning it into um, an internal market, we can kind of sell the idea of what it means to have your food grown right outside the building and kind of selling that. And these are some of the issues. Chances, could you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, and in the same fashion that we're Constructing the large box, I guess uh, a similar approach is being given to how we are approaching existing buildings on the site. So uh, this is kind of an overview or a model of how one might take the big box of the existing uh, factory and breaking that apart, taking that large floor plate, that large area of space normally used for manufacturing, and cutting it apart into things used for residential living and in this case for parking. So. We have like a loft situation with, um, you can go to the next slide, uh, where you might be able to reutilize some of this existing space in a, in a more sustainable fashion and continue, like we said earlier, having that character of that history of the site and then reintroducing some new aspects to it so you're doing that of reuse and that's a more sustainable approach. And within that, you can take the whole box itself and use it for, in this instance, we have um, living walls along portions of it. You, you have the photovoltaic opportunity along the massive amount of sawtooth, or uh, as we discussed actually yesterday, you also have the solar thermal aspect. And um, you can do living walls that help to break up the monotony of this large form. And um, water catchment is another area, or at least. Um, channeling it and uh, collecting it in detention ponds to help uh, with the runoff issues. And then um, having this teaching uh, didactic aspect to it of uh, rainwater uh, gardens and um, things spread out throughout the entire site is another opportunity there. Um, and there's there's multitude of instances within, within the site, but uh, looking specifically at this building, um, I went into doing multiple calculations as far as is surface area and the amount of potable water, no, not potable water, but um, collectible water um, from the site, and then also just the amount of actual generation. And uh, in general, we get about a 27.7 year payback with the uh, photovoltaic uh, ray installation. 
and then um, that power is enough to power 20% of the site. So from just this one building um, to power the entire uh, projected energy load for the entire site. And uh, just looking at, um, I think it's an example of looking at the existing as a means to uh, not only inform, but to generate in a very literal sense a lot of things for the future. Um, within the entire site, like I said earlier, there's this aspect of rainwater garden set it. And so um, these are some examples stripped directly from Portland, and they're getting about just as much rainwater we have annually. And so ours comes in a larger amount, and we'd have to size ours uh, based on what some of the engineering students have worked on in previous quarters. But um, these are worked out throughout the entire space, so it's a very pedestrian uh, friendly aspect. I mean, we have Forces within here with rainwater catchment, and then we have detention areas in these two locations specifically for just the amount of rainwater that we're going to be able to collect. Um, there's also the ability to have some of these uh, multifunctional units house some pumping stations, house some <coughs> teaching aspects maybe that are associated with rainwater gardens. So it's not just a matter of these are retail, these are offices, these are residential, these could also be um, mechanical. There's no real definition that way. So um, it's taking the entire site and approaching it as like um, how much can I use this, how many functions can I plug into this, and how efficiently can I really plug the whole thing together. And um, that's about with my <laughs> Okay, so just to wrap everything up, um, I just want to relate it back to the Go Cincinnati plan very briefly. Um, We've been marketing this functional programmatic green space throughout our entire presentation. And um, I just want to point out that we, we have plugged the numbers and um, to accomplish all of Ghost and Sandy Plan's goals. Uh, we've actually done that and exceeded some of them and still have room for 64% of the footprint of the site to be used for green space. And as Gary said, this just this isn't just another park. Person Cincinnati, this green space has a use. So um, we can go to the next slide. Just, I'm not going to go through the numbers, but um, sort of, I guess we just wanted to enforce that uh, we are hitting all of the development goals of those in the area. And so we'd love to hear your feedback. Sure. Um, yeah, and then just one more thing is we foresee this development that we've begun on the Millicon site as being able to spread out further, um, as we mentioned before, that's a big thing, to spread out further to these other sites. So one way we see that happening is through the multi-purpose units that we um, introduced previously. Uh, we see the, the first several phases, like maybe the first three phases happening within the site and happening in um, a number of years, like five or six years. But then beyond that, 10 or 15 years down the road, we're looking at bringing in um, the cast fab and other manufacturing areas, as well as really addressing the center of Cincinnati and implementing some of the things that Peter and Carrie talked about with breaking up these big boxes. Um, and then back to the multi-purpose units, we see these things just sort of spreading out and being able to um, not only tie back to our development, but really be a more flexible um, way for Cincinnati to accomplish its needs in the future for further development.